Have you ever noticed when you photo scan your models that the texture and the topology is actually a bit quite off? Um, that's because most people are actually taking photos of their models. Rather, the best way to do this out of my experience is to actually video scan your model. What does that mean? That means instead of taking a number of photos, you click record and you rotate around your object, which means you get 24 frames per second of your model and 24 frames per second of your model, which can be converted into images and those images could be used for your photo scan, which gives you a lot more accurate results and fantastic topology. So stay tuned for this tutorial, you'll love it guys, just watch it. Just open up Blender and you want to import the video which you are created. So you're going to have to go to the video editor, which is on the final slot. Um, so you got to click the arrow, video editor, beautiful. So then you want to go import uh, movie, add a movie, shift A, add a movie and then go down to here. All right, beautiful, we've imported it. But as you can see, it's actually distorted. It's 90 degrees off. So we're just gonna fix the resolution and change the re resolution as if it was a phone recording. And then we're gonna rotate it. So we're gonna shift A, add and uh, transform. So after add and transform, we're just proportioning it, rotating it, it's all good, beautiful. So now you want to select an output, save it as JPEG images or PNG, but most better off JPEG because low resolution uh, and select the output and how long the video is, the length, and then render it as JPEG images. So now you'll get a 24 frame or 12 frame, whatever, how many frames you add of the full shape of your object without any missing corners. Because if you individually take photos, you're gonna miss certain uh, perspectives and corners. But if you record it and go in a circle, you're gonna have the proper model completely recorded. And that's what you want. You want a full circle of your model well done in 24 frames. This is the best way to do it out of my personal experience. So we're gonna wait for this to finish and I'll uh, we'll continue later. Beautiful. So the images should be finished rendering and now open up mesh room, open up the image sequenced images, select them all and then import them into mesh room. Click and drag them in, import. Beautiful, delightful and gorgeous. Now what you want to do is click start. And make sure you do save your work because yeah just save your work be a normal human being save it and then after you save it click start and it's going to go through each one of those sections ready to, uh, transforming those images into an obj mesh and image map all right, so this is what you should get after it's finished uh, doing its thing. And those little squiggly lines at the top represent the camera angle where you took the photo slash video at. Each, each green line sort of represents, you know, each shot. Um, and this is what you can do is click, uh, you know, structure, form, motion off, and you can see the mesh, how it looks with its texture. It looks beautiful, honestly, this is such a great scan. You can see every little crack and corner, which is because of it, because we got every angle at a high 24 frame rate. So yeah, fantastic, let's import it into Blender. All right, beautiful. So we wanna open up Blender, delete everything in Blender and import the file where you actually saved it. Um, so import the OBJ. loading beautiful and you'll see it's a bit distorted and the way to fix this is going to blow uh, going to edit mode and rotate it and reposition it in edit mode you can't really do this outside of edit mode because that would uh this that would play around with the origin and you just want to uh, do it in edit mode for uh, for organizational purposes 
and now let's change it to cycles now let's go into edit mode and change it into smooth shading now let's divide the screen into two and add a material a principal shader and you should get a result something like this with the texture now let's go to the world settings and add a HDRI just to get a look on how things are looking now let's clean it up let's go back to solid mode go to edit mode select where you don't want to delete so the way we're going to do this go top view C select everywhere you don't want to delete which is this whole cylinder and then control and select that section and control I and delete everything else so we've just deleted everything we don't want and now we have a very nice and clean model all right so now we have a nice and clean model let's uh, start making the material so let's grab the color and put it into the normal map Let's add a bump map in between it and make sure you put it into height. This is just this is just to emphasize that specific texture. This isn't the best bump map, but this will do the job for now. Put it down to around point, point 0.4, give or take, depending on your situation. Add a color ramp between the two and just modify it to where you think it's best. Now, I'm moving this so I can just make it out that the, that the roots uh, is actually smooth and the bark is rough. So I've increased the white a little bit. Let's do some composition. So let's go into the color management and uh, check, put it down, put down the gamma and increase the exposure. Let's add a camera. Let's put the camera in position. So we're adding the camera, putting it in position, just, just uh, making use of, of this model that we have for this tutorial. We're gonna increase the focal length to emphasize depth of field and have that realism of zooming up and uh, and depth of field. So you get a result similar to this, which honestly I think we're looking, we're getting, we're really getting there. Um, bear in mind, there's no particles, there's no other models. This is just one model, and we've got this really fantastic result. Now we're gonna add a mesh. And, sorry an empty and this empty is going to represent the distance for the depth of field so after adding the depth of field you can just select the camera and go to the option focus object and I pick the empty and now if you change the options in F stop so if you decrease it the more depth of field you'll get so we're going to de decrease it to about one give or take you can play around it around with it for what's most appropriate for your scene now we're going to duplicate this tree and move it to an appropriate area so we can add a bit of a uh, a bit of a scene composition and show more of the ground to build that depth of field and it's pretty much ready to go now it's just all tweaking specifically towards your scene Fix up the resolution, fix up the camera angle, and it's ready to render. What we're gonna do is change it to GPU for quicker renders. We're going to go down to um, light paths, put four, that's all you need. Put everything else down to two. Um, and we're gonna bump up the tiles in the performance to 256. This means the actual size of the rendering of each tile will be 256 pixels by 256 pixels. And now this is ready to render.